I have played Dragon Quest Builders 2 for 120 hours and I have been meaning to review this game for a very long time and it is better late than never. The funny thing is that I didn't think I would play this game this much. I've had the game for over a year and I played it like 20 hours a year ago and then I picked it up again and you know the story. I got obsessed and I just owe it to the game to fully review it. Dragon Quest Builders 2 is a sandbox building and crafting RPG by Square Enix and Omega Force. It is a sequel to Dragon Quest Builders, which is a spin-off of the Dragon Quest series. This sequel was released in Japan in 2018 and worldwide in 2019. It is out on PS4, Switch and PC. You can play this game in both single player and multiplayer. But the multiplayer is a bit weird and restricted. <laughs> This game is massive. It is bigger than you think it is. And it was much bigger than I thought it was going to be. It has simply impressed me so much that it deserved a review. Story. The story is that you play as a customizable builder who is the only builder left in the world that is able to create things. There is of course a prime evil and it is generally the typical heroic story. You wash up on the shores of Isle of Awakening, not to be confused with Link's Awakening, and you meet Malroth, your new best friend and companion throughout the entire game. And he has amnesia. You guys then travel from one island to the next, helping out a bunch of people with building things. They all talk a lot in this game. A bunch, loads of text, and you will be hitting that A button so freaking much. Everyone in this game, they love to talk, and I am sure that you will notice that too. On your main hub island, which is called Isle of Awakening, you will meet the Hermit, which is like the god of the island, I don't know. But this island is actually your island, also known as the multiplayer island. This game has a long story campaign. It feels like it is never gonna finish. When you think you are done with what you think is the last island, think again. And when you think it surely must be over now, nope. <laughs> Gameplay. There are so many things to do in this game when it comes to the gameplay. I mean, time has simply flown by so quickly and I've just been utterly addicted. It is almost a forever game. Control-wise, you can play in both third-person and first-person mode. You can fight enemies with weapons and smash blocks with your hammer. You can place down blocks directly in front of you, both above and below you. And you can also place blocks directly beneath you by jumping. Same goes for all of these directions when smashing blocks. The controls are therefore very great when you have gotten used to them. You start off the game by choosing your gender and hair and skin and eye color. I recommend you also choose the tool controls settings to type 4 because it is just simply better. Trust me on this. The start of the game is very full of tutorials which is fine. So you can get familiar with the controls and all the game mechanics. All quests and tasks are conveniently marked on the map as exclamation points and dots. And if you ever feel stuck or unsure of what to do, ring your closest bell and talk with the question marked quest givers. You can take screenshots of your creations and both share yours and view others at notice boards. Remember you can sprint on R. I actually played almost the entire game without knowing that I could sprint on R. Generally speaking, the game is about collecting resources and materials to then use for creating and building all sorts of things. There are also combat RPG mechanics in the form of equipping yourself and your comrades with better weapons and armor, as well as shields for higher attack and defense. There is also experience points and leveling, a hunger meter, gratitude points used for unlocking new items, and a general base level for each base. Also, there's a day and night cycle. I mean, this game has it all. There is full control of camera angles with zooming in or out, and also the option to go first person mode for more precision block placing. Get a bird's view on the minus button and view the map of your current world, which you have to explore to fully view. 
The game never really feels overwhelming, as all new features are introduced to you gradually. Later in the game you will unlock the ability to glide. You will also get the ability to change already placed blocks, copy and paste sections actually. You can also get a flute, a chisel and a bottomless pot used for water and lava. Some DLC also adds fishing to the game. And I also need to mention that near the end of the main campaign of the game, you will get to unlock the flying car. That is so much worth it. When it comes to inventory management, you switch in and out items easily to your items bar by pressing Y and then sorting your inventories with the X button. You will do this a lot and it is so convenient. The quests and missions you get often requires you to build certain types of rooms or complete blueprints, room types. It can be like kitchens, bedrooms, bathrooms, armories and so many more with a bunch of different types of each room type as well. Like a farmer's bedroom, I mean etc. Look at this list. There's so many recipes and rooms. On bigger projects, you can place down a blueprint and a chest with the materials that the building needs. And your NPC friends will do all the building for you. That is so nice to watch them work for you. Alongside the main island, which also is the multiplayer island, there are three major chapter islands. The main story will take you through all of these, including a small and ridiculous chapter on a prison island, which were two hours of the game that I really hated, but otherwise I really loved all the other islands. I played this game a lot with my cousin and we already made a video about this game. Link down below. I forgot to mention that you can also tame and ride animals and you can also make crop fields for doing actual farming and getting ingredients for cooking a bunch of dishes. This game has it all. graphics are cute and chunky, it has a Minecraft feel, it is colorful and you can pretty much make out the graphics just by looking at my gameplay. I like the graphics. Some animations are stiff and NPCs seem to be addicted to clapping at everything. At everything that I do, at everything that I build, at everything that I simply achieve. The Switch version of this game is apparently not the best version. Apparently, because I haven't played any other version, but it was fine. But if you are looking to build a bunch of really big structures on your main island, the Switch version can actually lag a bit. But we are talking like 400 hours into the game sort of lag if you are really into building things on your main island. And this is apparently smoother in other versions. But it is absolutely playable for most people. And in my opinion, nothing beats portability. And for me especially, bed gaming. Music. Some of the music is legit nice to listen to, but unfortunately most of the music is simply unbearable as most of the music actually drove me insane. I had to lower the background music in the settings because it was driving me insane and you sit for a long time in this game and it's just like the music doesn't really add up to a more modern game like this because they are reusing older music from older titles in the original Dragon Quest series. We're talking music from the 90s and some of it isn't good. And I know this is the known style for the Dragon Quest universe but it can drive you insane. There's no voice acting, only noises, loads of noises and loads of clapping. But other than that, the game has great sound effects overall. And I actually like the original sound effects from the Dragon Quest series. Mm. 
Verdict. This is an extremely long game. I mean, I saw the credits roll at 120 hours, and I kid you not. But I have to admit that I spent a lot of those hours just playing around in multiplayer with my cousin. I visited his island, and he visited my island, and we built a lot of things together. And it was quite the adventure. I have so many fond memories of this game now because of that. But if I were to guess, only the main quest in itself is about 70 to 80 hours, if I were to guess. So it is a long game, even if you plan on not playing it in multiplayer. The DLC is also nice, but you don't need it unless you in the end game want more furniture variety. This game had me hooked hard, and I just don't see this game being anything less than a 10 out of 10 for me personally. Because for me personally, it just really was that. I have grown really fond of Dragon Quest Builders too. I'll always remember this game. So that was that everyone. I hope you hit like on my video and check out all my other buy or not reviews. Link to a full playlist down below. And if you are new, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you later. Exclama ex exclamation points. <laughs> that is a weird name.